they've been waiting a while for Boris Johnson to leave. The world's media camped outside 10 Downing Street. Tory MPs queuing dutifully. The man who had promised them he'd get Brexit done is leaving. But the issue that has dominated British politics for almost a decade is still hanging around. Mr Johnson, forced to step down after a litany of controversies, was seeking to polish his record in government. As I leave office, unemployment down to lows not seen since I was about 10 years old and bouncing around on a space hopper, my friends. Three new high-speed rail lines, three colossal road pro programmes from the Pennines uh, to Cornwall. And on the matter of what he does next. On the subject of bouncing around in future careers, let me say that I am now like one of those booster rockets that has fulfilled its function and I will now be gently re-entering the atmosphere and splashing down invisibly in some remote and obscure corner of the Pacific. And like Cincinnatus, I am returning to my plough. With that, Mr Johnson and his wife Carrie climbed aboard a Range Rover and headed off into what the departing British Prime Minister might call some sunny-lit uplands. The only thing left to do to board a jet and head into the drizzle of Aberdeen. A visit there to the British monarch in her Balmoral residence to hand over the keys to number 10. Liz Truss, in normal circumstances, might be thought of as the cat that got the cream. But these aren't normal circumstances. Well, our economics correspondent Paul Coggan joins me now. So certainly not normal circumstances then, Paul. And there's going to be no honeymoon period here for Liz Truss. Yes, so the last of the ceremony is almost over. Boris Johnson offered his resignation to uh, the British monarch. She accepted it. Liz Truss is there at the moment uh, taking on the new job. So she will have to deal with so many things. I think the hope here in Dublin is that the issue of Brexit might get parked. There might be some common sense brought to bear. She has to deal with soaring energy bills in Britain. They've spent the past two months campaigning herself and Rishi Sunak to become the next leader of the Tory party. These issues have been building up and building up and they simply weren't being dealt with. There's reports that they may cap energy prices in Britain, which will be of interest here considering some of the energy providers in this jurisdiction have parent companies in Britain. She'll have to grapple with a big recession potentially. Inflation is running away. She'll have to do something about that. So the question about Brexit is, is, is something that might be at the forefront of what she has to deal with. There had been reports over the past few weeks that she was threatening to trigger what's known as Article 16, which could prompt a, a full-scale trade war with the European Union, and Ireland would find itself in the middle of that. So the government is hopeful for a change of course here, but is ready to be disappointed. All right, Paul, thank you very much for that.